All right, it brings me great pleasure to uh, not do E-Trade myself, but living vicariously uh, through others, uh, especially my students. The first student from Chapman University is actually a failure. He dropped out, like many other great entrepreneurs, and he never took my class, then he would have stayed, I hope. Nevertheless, he stems from uh, an all-American entrepreneurial family that looks at opportunities rather than problems. And he realized after he enrolled in Chapman University that he saw business opportunities everywhere. Uh, growing up with a mom that I had the pleasure of meeting, he was uh, raised not asking for allowances, a weekly allowance, saying, can I have $100 this week? Instead, he pre presented as a 12-year-old full-blown business plans asking for investors. That was his mom and dad. And anything from a lemonade stand and up, he has done it. Uh, but during his time at Chapman University, other than dropping out, he achieved two great things. He discovered that his sister was part of a so-called sorority, which is sort of strange for Swedes. Girls hang out with girls and fraternities, boys hang out with boys. Uh, but they buy a lot of Greek wear, like Greek letters, sweaters, and saying strange Greek letters. And she paid an inordinate sum of money for this. And he was amazed. They had to go to a physical store, look through a catalog, and order and wait three months before it came at a high cost and no customization. This is an industry ripe for revolution. And Devin said, let's drop out. But before he did so, he found one more thing at Chapman University, his beautiful wife, Melanie. Uh, Melanie took the other path. There is this debate whether you should drop out, like the big no names, or go to school. And I'm happy that Melanie actually was a note-taking uh, student in the front row of my class, and then uh, partnering with um, Devin and setting up a series of businesses, starting with custom Greek threads and luxury monograms, and then the Entrepreneurs Academy, where she coaches other women to start a business and have some self-esteem, because a problem that she has identified is that many women work in their business, they don't work on their business. Both Melanie and Devin are exa examples of the four-hour work week. They set out to live their dream and find a business model that works and take themselves out of the equation instead of saying, I'm going to be at work every hour, every minute, every day, for every phone call. So they're great outsourcers. In order to be able to fulfill their dreams, starting new businesses, travel to Sweden was easy for them. Their businesses are ticking as we speak. And uh, basically, living in New York City, it didn't make sense to bring this business there, but then they visit their business headquarters in California every six months, and it still operates. So what drives them? I know that they are passionate about doing good, sharing interesting stories, coming back to campus, sharing with students, and it's my great pleasure to introduce them to you. Um, they do this duo performance. Without further ado, talking about serial entrepreneurship and we focus on Pinterest, which um, has been the power of pinning a queen, uh, Melanie's focus lately. Please welcome Melanie and Devin Duncan. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Doctor. All right. Welcome. Thank you. Do you have the clicker? Oh, uh, where is it? <laughs> All right. That was a wonderful introduction. Thank you, Doctor. Good morning, everybody. Hope you were ready for a wonderful and educational two days. How about this setup? This is beautiful, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, it was our first time to Sweden, and uh, we've been loving the city so far. We flew in early yesterday. And everyone is so nice and stylish. Very and, stylish. Uh, the city is beautiful, so this definitely won't be our last time here. And uh, as uh, Dr. Murr introduced us, we uh, met in college, and we have been starting businesses over the last five, six years. They all have an emphasis of being based online so that we don't have to be stuck in a physical place. We can run them from wherever we want. Right now, we're choosing to live in Manhattan, New York City. Our business headquarters, our manufacturing facilities, and where our main managers work out of uh, is in Southern California. So, obviously, since we started our businesses, social media has been a huge part of our businesses since Facebook started in 2004, um, and we started getting in the online scene in around 2006. So, we always want to make sure that we have a large integration with social media as the best way to reach people, especially our target, uh, our target market. So, what do we look for in social media? We can easily get distracted with all the noise that's out there, trying to be on everything and do it all, and then never really accomplishing much or being able to measure what we're accomplishing. So we always are looking for the newest 
uh, not the newest, but the most effective and productive mm -hmm. ways uh, in social media. So you can put in as little time as possible and get the maximum ROI and not just get lost in doing updates and tweets and check-ins. Uh, so one of our newest interests is Pinterest. Uh, so, uh, but that's, a, it's been really effective for us and we actually stumbled across it by accident. Uh, it, one of our businesses, Luxury Monograms, <clears throat> really focuses on, on home decor, so the, the pictures are very beautiful, so it's prime for Pinterest. But we came across it by accident where all of a sudden we got an influx of orders over a couple weeks and we were wondering if we were just f uh, featured on a couple new blogs or we were... Uh, we, you know, we'd been on some television show featured by one of our wholesalers that we didn't really know about. But we checked into our Google Analytics, and we saw that Pinterest was our number one traffic referral source. Now, keep in mind, we hadn't started a Pinterest account yet for our company. This happened all organically by our followers or by our potential customers going to our site, seeing these beautiful pictures and pinning them. And then their followers seeing in their newsfeed, in the Pinterest newsfeed, that they had pinned something and people that their, their friends were then buying. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> Pinterest was referring more traffic than our, our Google Organic and Facebook combined for us, which was huge because for all of our organic terms, we were ranking in the top three. So that was, that, and that was a total surprise. So then we started looking at, man, if we weren't even doing this on purpose, what could we do to, to capitalize on this and optimize it and really make sure we could keep this going? This just this wasn't a, you know, a, a short-term thing. So we spent the next couple of weeks really studying what do the best people on Pinterest do? What do the large companies, people with the best following and with the best ROI, what are they doing? So that is what we are gonna cover with you today. Um, we're gonna give you action items so by the time over the next 13 minutes, you can have all the material to go and implement it into your business and uh, get the most from Pinterest and get started right away so you can be seeing high ROI from it. <clears throat> so we'll be talking about how to gain exposure and get customers. We're gonna talk about how to drive tons of traffic, how to use Pinterest to boost your SEO, because all the links on Pinterest are follow links, which Google loves, and how to make money doing it. So what is Pinterest? I know it's very new um, in the States and especially here. I know a lot of people aren't on it yet, but uh, basically imagine everyone had you know, a cork board or, or their refrigerator where they put pictures up, inspiring pictures, places they wanted to travel, products they wanted to buy, different things that, that inspired them. So Pinterest is an online uh, virtual pin board where you can pin different pictures from around the web and p categorize them onto different, onto different pin boards. And then people will follow those different boards and see what you're liking and what you're pinning and uh, put them on their own boards under whatever categories they want, maybe products to, uh, to buy for, for their guy friends or it's, it's a you know, board of cars that they like, whatever their inspiration is. But it's, it's solely picture-based. All right. So why we're gonna talk about Pinterest. It has had an incredible growth rate. So some of the stats are it reached 10 million unique users faster than any independent website in history, which is an incredible stat. So it's very new, but it's blown away any other website as far as growth rate. And the, well, this is what's important for businesses. Pinterest is now driving more referral traffic to websites than YouTube, Google Plus, and LinkedIn combined. That's a lot of referral traffic. And as a business, that's what you really care about. You wanna get people through the social media and to your site to see what your services are, to see what products you sell. And it's now driving, I think as of last month, more referral traffic than Twitter. And I know a lot of people in this room put a lot of focus on Twitter, but Pinterest is referring more traffic than Twitter itself. And for product-based businesses, it is sending more revenue per click than Facebook or Twitter. I mean, more than Facebook, that's amazing. Still, I can't believe that. But what's great, what's helped Pinterest really grow this fast is that it's integra it integrates very well with Facebook. So I'm sure a lot of you have seen in your newsfeed 
how you'll see what pe your friends have been pinning if they're on Pinterest. So even if you're not on Pinterest, you are going to see what those people have been pinning so you can go and check it out almost like as another photo gallery and then easily join with one click because you're already logged into Facebook. So that's what's really helped it you know, on this incredible growth rate. But as a business, this is important to know because even if a lot of your users aren't on Pinterest yet, they are gonna see what their friends are pinning even if they're not already on the site because it integrates into Facebook. And because almost a billion people are already on Facebook, that is a great shortcut to make sure you're getting in front of as many users as possible. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Melanie and she's gonna give you the action items that you guys can implement in your business within an hour and start seeing immediate results. Okay, so I hope everyone's awake. I know it's a little bit early, but we had the pleasure of enjoying some of your fantastic coffee. So I'm counting on the fact that you're all caffeinated, you're here to learn, and you're excited because I'm gonna deliver a lot of value in just the next few short minutes that we have left on this stage that I really believe and I know, both from personal experience and from the thousands of people I've coached all over the world, and the fact that Pinterest can make a huge difference in your business in traffic, exposure, and the ability to gain new clients and new customers. And the first strategy I have to share with you today actually requires just a one-time action for a lifetime of Pinterest exposure. Now, how many social media outlets can you say that about? But we're dealing with a whole different type of animal here with Pinterest because you do one simple item, like add this pin it button to your site. And the way you can get this, you can go on Pinterest.com under the About section, and they actually give you the code. And this can go under any image on your site. If you have a blog, an actual product page, Anywhere you have an image, you can put a pin it button. And what this does, it allows people and encourages them to pin the content for you. So think of it as having an army of people that are updating your Facebook status updates or tweeting for you. You basically have access to let other people do your social media campaigns for you on Pinterest without even getting involved. Now, of course, I'm also gonna be showing you what you can do to be pushing and creating your own account. But how many social media accounts or how much social media value can you get with just a one-time action like this? Now, I know, like Devin said, with social media, we're always looking for the most effective and productive ways to be promoting and getting exposure for our business. Because I know, like many of you out there, you have a lot to do. You probably have three to four to five other social media campaigns that you might be managing or that you're trying to get started for your business. So you need to know what you can do in the least amount of time that is gonna get you the best and the most continual results. Because we're not just talking about a spike in traffic one day. Like Devin said, we've had our businesses featured on huge national television shows, and while that's very exciting and you see a great spike for about three to four days, what happens after that? It decreases. Well, what you're dealing with with Pinterest, very different than other social media, uh, like Facebook or Twitter, where your status updates, everything is constantly being pushed down the page. Pinterest kind of works more like this. It's circular. It has a lot to do with repinning, reposting, because 80% of pins on Pinterest are repins. So what this means is you basically have a viral army constantly circulating. And if you're familiar with Pinterest, unfortunately I don't have a ton of time to go into detail about how it works, but with the boards access, with the news feed-like feature, you have several ways for your content to continuously be circulated with little to no additional effort. So the pin it button, add that to your site, everywhere. And I'm gonna encourage you to pin your own original content. Now, I'm going to be going over things that not a lot of people are doing. In fact, when I teach a lot of this, people have never even seen it or they've never even done it on Pinterest. But you want to pin your own original content. And what I mean by that, videos, infographics, I'm going to be walking you through some specific examples of what you should be pinning. But by creating your own original content instead of repinning, like I talked about, that 80% statistic, you're giving yourself the power to leverage your exposure, and you can link anywhere you want to any of your content. Now, depending on the type of business you're in, this could be to a product page where they can just click and buy. It could be to an opt-in page where you're going to be able to co uh, collect that contact information and further the relationship with them. Depends what your marketing or sales sequence is. Also to blog posts. Pinterest is a great way for you to be driving traffic to value building blog posts. It's going to build new readers for you. 
Now you can also edit your pins. Now when you choose to pin something, you might be taking it from another website, or you might be just uploading it from your computer. But the beauty of it is, Pinterest allows you at any point to go in and edit your pin and decide where it links to. Now you don't want to make the mistake that most people make if you are uploading something from your computer and just having it be a dead link and not go anywhere. As Devin mentioned, Pinterest is all about referral traffic. We want to take advantage. So make sure that you're editing your pins and having them link directly to the most crucial area. I see a lot of people pin something, you know, a particular product, and it takes them to the home page of the website. You don't want to do that. Your consumer, your visitor is going to be confused. You want to make sure that you're linking them directly to where they're expecting to go. So one big myth that I want to debunk for all of you so that you're way ahead of the curve in understanding how you can be utilizing Pinterest. The big myth is that Pinterest isn't for service-based businesses. And I'm sure many of you out there are skeptical. I mean, we in the beginning, we were skeptical about this. Another type of social media, what does this mean? And I know for a fact a few of you guys out there are thinking, yeah, I've heard about Pinterest, but you know, it's just for girls. It's just for, especially in the US, a lot of people associate it with crafts and cooking and very female-based audiences. But I know for a fact there was a new study that just reported that in Europe, the most popular forms of content on Pinterest were business advice or social media information. So please make sure you're tuning in because even if you're not convinced quite yet today, Pinterest is not going away and it's only gonna become more relevant in a wide variety of industries. So, not only for service-based businesses, because of course it makes sense that you can pin things, pin products to product pages, but as a service-based business, how do you take advantage of this opportunity? Well, one way is video. Hopefully, if you are a service-based business or even a product-based business, you're currently utilizing video in your marketing. Pinterest allows you to pin easily within seconds any video content from YouTube. In fact, Lionsgate, which is a production, a Hollywood film company based in LA, they went from 200,000 to 400,000 views of their videos on YouTube, um, doubled it within five days, just by pinning. Because of the size of the audience, because of the nature of the viral exposure, if you already have video content and you're just looking for a way to test this new platform, be pinning your videos. See the type of interaction and the reaction you're getting to that content. In addition, tutorials. The two forms of content on Pinterest are either inspiring or useful information. That's what we see that gets repinned the most, circulated the most, makes sense. Well, you want to think about taking information and putting it in a visual manner. That's truly what Pinterest is. We need to think about all of our text, all of our advice, whether you're consulting, product-based, anything instructional. How can you take your knowledge and put it in an image-based format? That's what Pinterest is. If you understand that, you understand how to be successful on this platform. So think about what tutorials you could possibly do as an image and create pins from. And I'm sure you're all very familiar, creating images this day, these days is so easy. You can do it anywhere from you know, just doing something on Photoshop or getting a graphic designer for you know, five to $10. We use Fiverr is a great website in the US that we um, do small projects from. But think about creating image-based information and value. In addition, like I said, infographics, one of the hottest forms of content on Pinterest. So think about information that you know within your industry that you could use to be creating credibility, expertise, and establishing yourself as a leader in your industry. And useful information, like I said. So you could do this visually, but one of my favorite ways to do it, as you can see right here, is this how-to. Because what we want to do, we don't want to just keep people on Pinterest. We want them coming to our site. We want them signing up for our newsletter, buying our products. You get the idea, building the relationship. So my favorite way is to create images that give a preview of the content that's going to be on the other side. How-to pins. So think about, for your business, what could you be displaying either in terms of value, teaching how to use your product, giving people ideas how to use your products, or your expertise? How could you create a great, enticing, aesthetically high-quality image that also has text on top, giving them a preview to the benefit of what they're going to see on the other side of that pin? And SEO, like Devin said, Backlinks, you can get them by using the main uh, keywords and the captions of your pins, as you can see. The hashtags allow you to categorize them on Pinterest, so you can actually um, click those and it will pull up all search results under that term. 
but also in terms of the names of your boards. You want those to be keywords. The about section on your profile, keywords. All of this is going to help you optimize your SEO simply by pinning. And each pin and every repin is a backlink. You can also add prices to pins. All you have to do is type the dollar sign and the numeric value, and Pinterest will automatically slap on, slap on this great banner that will give you the price in the upper left, and it also allows you to be found under their gift section on the main home page. And add links to your caption. No one is doing this. Now, when you click on a, on a pin on Pinterest, it will direct you to where that source image is from, but by simply typing in the URL, it hyperlinks it and it also bolds it, which just encourages even more action, which is very important. I'm sure you all know call to actions in marketing, very, very effective. Okay, so I think I did just, I'm just 15 seconds over, so I know I went over it very quickly, but if you are interested in learning more Pinterest strategies, you can go to our website, powerofpinning.com, and learn the full scope of everything you need to know to be using Pinterest to market and promote your business. Thank you. Um, uh, we just have time for uh, one question uh, for you guys, uh, mm -hmm. serial entrepreneurs um, looking at this as your latest venture. Uh, do you see yourself uh, moving generally from product-based to service-based businesses in your own entrepreneurism? Go ahead. You know, I would have to say absolutely. We just recently got into more consulting and more, they're called info products, where you're basically educational materials online. And with our background in manufacturing, both in apparel and home decor, I mean, it's an excellent business. There's nothing wrong with it. But if you can do something digitally, like we have the benefit now to be able to seamlessly teach and provide information to people all over the globe. And that's very exciting compared to being limited to where we can get UPS to ship properly. You know, we now have the ability to, within seconds, be connecting and teaching and educating people all over the world. And that's very exciting. Yeah, no, thank you so much for the introduction to Pinterest and uh, sharing some of your perspectives. And um, uh, thank you again. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's get